Today we're going to talk about a funny little thing in algebra called a piecewise function, or a piecewise defined function, if you want to be technical. The idea is actually a simple idea. A piecewise defined function is a function that follows a different rule, or different rules, depending on the value of x. And remember, whenever we talk about x, we're talking about the input. Because if you remember, the idea of a function um, is that you take some input, you plug it into some machine, which does something to it, and spits out the output. Input goes in, output comes out, and what happens in the machine is some combination of operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. So far we've learned how to do absolute values. Like All these different things are what goes into the function. The idea of a piecewise function is that depending on what x is, you might actually go to one of two function rules to get to your y. That's the idea of a piecewise function. Some x values will go to one, some x values will go to the other. The way we communicate it in writing is we just write both the different rules out, and then we tell you when to follow each rule. So to look at an example, look in the middle at g of x. This function, which I'm going to reading this one right here, g of x is x plus 5 if x is less than or equal to 3, and 2x minus 1 if x is greater than 3. So we've got two different parts here. The first part are what we call our function rules. And the second part is what we call our subdomain. That's an important word here. And so if I were to give you an x value and tell you, give me the value of g of 7, for example, looking at this example right here. Well, just like any other function, I'm telling you 7 and you're supposed to put it into a function and tell me what comes out. Well, because there are two different function rules, you have to decide which one to use. And that's where the subdomain comes in. For every input, so for the input 7, you're going to say, oh, is 7 less than or equal to 3? Or is 7 greater than 3? Well, of course, 7 is greater than 3, so we're going to follow this rule. So to find g of 7, we would take 2x minus 1 and plug our 7 into that, which is 14 minus 1, or 13. That's all there is to it. Whatever value you want to put in, you check and see which subdomain it fits into, and that will tell you which rule to follow. g of 0. Since 0 is less than or equal to 3, we will follow x plus 5. So we will plug that 0 into x plus 5, which is 0 plus 5. The one thing you have to be careful about, if we look over here at number 8, g of 3, notice how 3 is the number that's right on the edge. So you've got to be careful about th thinking about which of our subdomains this is a part of. Is 3 greater than 3, or is 3 less than or equal to 3? Well, when you say them right next to each other, it's easier to decide. 3 is greater, less than or equal to 3 is not bigger than 3, that or equal to makes a big deal, makes a big difference. So we will follow the x plus 5 rule when we find g of 3. And the next thing I'm going to show you is how this translates to graphs. So graphs of piecewise functions um, often look a little bit odd. What happens with graphs of piecewise functions is you might have a graph that looks like one thing for a while, like I've got a parabola here, 
and then at some point it just switches to be a straight line. And then sometimes it even jumps. So now I'll have an absolute value there. Like a piecewise function can do all sorts of weird things, following different rules at different times. So they start to look a little bit weird. We're not going to have to graph too many by hand, just enough to get the idea of what they mean. So here's one that we can do, and looking at number two over here. f of x is negative x plus 3 while x is less than 2, or negative 4 while x is greater than or equal to 2. So the best advice I can give you, strategy here, is to find the endpoints. Find the value of f when x is 2, like that point where the subdomains switch. So first off, according to the first rule, if x was 2, then negative 2 plus 3 is equal to 1. Uh, so uh, I would plug a negative 2 in there and get 1. And so if x was 2, y would be 1 if there was this or equal to, if this was or equal to. But it's not. But the fact that if x were 2 coming from the left-hand side, from when x is less than 2, the function would be equal to 1, does tell me that there will be an open circle at 2, comma 1. And again, the reason for that is because negative, if I plug in a 2 in there, I get a 1. So when x was 2, y would have been 1 if we were still following this first function rule. And then I can use, because this is a straight line, I can use the slope to move towards the left. Remember that this subdomain is telling me that I'm only graphing this line negative x plus 3 when x is less than 2. And so for all the space back here when x is less than 2, the graph would have had a slope of negative 1. So what I can do is just draw a line with a slope of negative 1 coming from the point that I just found. And so that's the left-hand part of the graph. For the right-hand part of the graph, well, this one's one of those times when very easy sometimes seems tricky. But this graph is just negative 4, which is weird. There's no x. There's a name for this, by the way. It's called a constant function. What a constant function means is that the y value, the output, will be negative 4 no matter what the input is, as long as the input is greater than or equal to 2. And what that looks like is a horizontal line. It's just the line y equals negative 4. Notice how I closed in the circle there because of that or equal to. And so that's what the graph of this piecewise function looks like. Again, I'll remind you and summarize, the idea was to find these dots, these endpoints first, figure out which one was open, which one was closed, and then use either the slope of the line going backwards, or in this case, the constant function going forwards to figure out what everything else looks like. But finding these endpoints was the important first step.